welcome ladies. Thank you for coming to my instant pop class and Kim. Um, so how many of you guys have used your Instapot before? Yes. Yeah. And do you feel, obviously you don't feel comfortable enough no, because that's why you're here. <laughs> and Julie, what were you saying before about like, you know, you've used it once? Maybe two times. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Debbie? I think twice also. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, maybe three times. Okay. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So, so thank you for coming. So I'm going to teach you guys everything that you need to know about the Instapot tonight and demystify everything that, that, um, that this little machine um, can do. And it is an amazing machine. It is like having five appliances in one. So it, you can saute in it. So like if you don't, if you run out of burners on your stove, you can just use it to saute by um, pressing, um, if, you know, different ones have different, um, different buttons. Like this is Kim's, so I'm not familiar with that one, but she'll be able to tell you which one. So there's the saute button that you press and you, use the, you can use that to sear before you start your pressure cooking. And I pretty much feel like with any meat that has skin on it or beef or pork, it adds a ton of flavor when you sear it first. So I always sear my meat first if I, if I can. The only thing I don't sear is chicken breast, okay? Because that doesn't need to sear. So I always press the sauteed button first, put in a little oil and sear. Um, so that is so it can sear. It can also, it's also a pressure cooker. It's also a slow cooker. It can also make rice, it can also make yogurt. And so it can do so many different things. You can bake cakes, you can do cheesecakes, I mean, all kinds of things. It's, it's really just a vessel, but the pressure, um, it, so, but what it majorly does is it can cook anything that can cook in a crock pot in like one fifth the time. So for example, the ranch chicken chili that we're gonna make tonight, this would take about three to four hours in your crock pot or with thighs, it would take like five or six. In the Instant Pot, it would take um, 10 minutes. Right, and and that's just cooking time. So I do need to differentiate that on um, all of these machines. They need time to come to pressure. So that's called. So you have to. So that. So when you say cooking time, it means once it comes to pressure, then it starts to count down, and that's how long it takes to cook. Um, most of them, like chick, when I do ranch chicken chili um, defrosted, it takes about ten minutes. So anything that is defrosted takes about ten minutes to come to pressure, depending upon. How, how much you have in the pot. The more you have, the longer it takes. Um, this this today um, in ranch chicken chili, I, I actually froze it in the pot, so it's the same size. Oh, wow. So I'm gonna we're gonna cook this from frozen, which I'm really excited to show you guys about that. Um, and um, so that is so that's so that's the cooking time. So time to come to pressure, then cooking time. And um, so all of them have different buttons, like I said, right? So. This one is the, the um, and they come in different sizes. These are six quart and these are eight quart. Um, the one that I think is the universal, the best one, um, is the six quart. But then if, for like really big portions, this is a good one. And then they even have like I think a five quart or a four a quart, like a smaller one for like outside of for single people. Um, but like this one has a saute button right here. It has slow cook, so that's how you do um, crock pot if you wanted to. Um, and then like a pork shoulder in a, in, in a crock pot would take eight hours. In this, it'll take 20 minutes cook time. Um, a pot roast, which would take eight to 10 hours in a crock pot, would take about 50 minutes to an hour. So, and 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 the way, the reason why it cooks so quickly, and it still gets that, um, the same, actually even better texture than in a crock pot, is because of the pressure. That something about the pressure and the steam and um, how it cooks makes it, makes the meat come out super tender and, and you know, off, fall off the bone. You could do ribs. I mean, you could do so many things, and it's really amazing. So, what we're making tonight is we're making three different things, and I'm just gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, show you. I'm gonna get going and show you guys how to use it, and then I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about Wild Tree while they're cooking, and then um, when I'm done with that, you guys can take home a bag with the seasonings to make each recipe that we're making tonight, and then you can go home and make your own and just add your proteins, and you'll go home with the recipes. And then you'll also go home with um, the conversion recipes for the crock pot kits that we have for sale. There's slow cooking and there's soups on. Um, those are crock pot and we've created conversions for them for the Instant Pot. So, okay, so first I'm gonna start with the ranch chicken chili. So this is uh, a recipe from soups, uh, from, sorry, from slow cooking. It's um, our, our um, crock pot uh, make ahead meal kit. And I'll tell you guys more about that later. Um, 
But what I have done is this, I actually froze it already um, in, in the Instant Pot, so it's the same shape as um, the Instant Pot. So as you'll see, I'm just gonna put it in, um, frozen, and I am guessing that this will probably take about 20 minutes to come to pressure, and then it'll take about nine minutes to cook. So I suppose I should have probably softened this up a little bit, so I'm gonna have to peel it off, but just peel it. And when you're at your house, the one thing, I just put some water in, a, in your sink and toss it in for a few minutes while the pot gets hot. And then when you put it in, it's soft enough to pull out. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to add any liquid to this because it's already got two cups of, um, of liquid and it's frozen already. So it'll just kind of melt on its own. So, so, you go, so this, the way that this is gonna work is it makes this nice little sound. So you hear that like, that's the, the way of knowing, and you know you just, so you go like that, kind of maybe off center by about like three to four inches, and then it goes on here, and then I'll do manual. It always um, defaults to 30 minutes, and then I'll just bring it back down to 10 minutes. And I'm gonna do it on ceiling mode as opposed to venting. And the reason you wanna do it on ceiling mode is that um, it doesn't let the liquid escape. If you do it on venting, it'll never come to pressure and it'll just, all the stuff will escape. So you always want, I don't even really know why the venting mode is there, to be honest. So it's always on, always cook on ceiling mode, okay? And um, so now it's on and it's, it's, and if you tried to open it right now, you couldn't, it's locked, okay? Or if you make a mistake and you put it for the wrong time, all you have to do is just press um, cancel, keep warm cancel. So we could do that. So I'm gonna do that. All right, it's off. Now if I wanted to open it, I can open it. If it's like mid cooking and you wanted to stop, you would have to release the pressure in order to get it to open. That's what's great about these electric pressure cookers is they will not explode because of that safety feature. So that's really, really nice. So I'm gonna turn it on again. So manual, go down to 10 minutes. And then as soon as this is done cooking, so once it comes to pressure, it'll um, start to count down. So, um, so it'll come on in just one minute, it's on. So now it's locked, I can't open it, and it's going to come to pressure, and as soon as it comes to pressure, then it's, it's gonna start to count down. So it'll, you know, you'll, see, you'll see the 10, then it'll go to nine, then eight, and then that's all you'll know. And then when it's done, it'll beep, and then we'll release the pressure, with, and we'll use a towel because the steam's gonna escape and it's really easy to burn yourself. So I'll show you guys when that time comes. So, so this is going, okay? And now we are going to do, I also, um, you can make dessert. You can do lots of things. Um, there, there'll be more classes that we're gonna have later on in the year. And we'll show you guys how to make other things like hard boiled eggs, rice, you know, other desserts. There's so many things that you could do. Um, which is great. So now I'm gonna use, so this is um, this is bread pudding, okay? Mm -hmm. So what is in here is basically, you know, day-old crusty bread, like a, a layer of bread, and then I put about a teaspoon um, of sugar on top of that, and then apples that I peeled and thinly sliced and I mixed with our oatmeal, sugar, and spice. And I sprinkled, I um, mixed the apples with that, layered one layer of apples, and then a layer of raisins, and then another layer of bread with a little bit of sugar, and then more raisins, and then another layer of apples, and then the last layer of bread, and then um, uh, we put in half and half and heavy cream and a couple eggs, and whipped those up and poured it on top, and it sat. So you could do it either overnight or at least, um, the recipe says at least an hour and a half. I think it's better the longer it's in there, at least overnight or eight hours. So I. I prepped this this morning, and um, what's what? Um, so they all come with the trivet, so you could do it on the trivet, um, or there's these little things that it's called, they're by OXO. You can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them at Williams Sonoma, Sir Latog. This is like ten or eleven dollars. Um, and what's great about it is you can it it's got the handle because what, what's going to happen is when it's done, it's going to be really super hot. So it's kind of hard and awkward to go in there with gloves 
right, and not burn yourself. So that's why it's nice to have this thing with candles. So, um, so now I'm just gonna grab, you just need to put in two cups of water. So, did you bring this? I did. Thank you, okay. Mm -hmm. water in the bottom of your machine and that's something else that I, I want to mention is that um, when cooking with your instant pot you always need to have liquid always at least half a cup if not one cup of liquid because that's what gets it to come to pressure if you don't have enough liquid it, it'll burn and it won't cook properly so I'm going to put in two cups and then I'm going to put this inside like that oh, the whole thing, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. huh. Okay. Did you want to? Did you want to cook that over there? Uh, yeah. That that way we have a separate plug. That's probably a good idea. Okay. Just so we don't have we don't over overuse our electricity. <laughs> oh, you know what? I don't remember how long this cooks for. What the what? Oh, what? that little white. That is uh, the catch. It's a little catch basin. So because of the water, the pressure, there's water on the lid, and so it, it kind of gets off into that little trough around the edge of your instant pot. And that's simply a little catch thing. There's a hole to drain any extra water. <laughs> that's all that is. If you have one of those on your instant pot, and if you don't have, if it falls off, it just drips on the counter. Whatever. <laughs> it's just water. So. <laughs> Thumb, like how many pounds you have in there and how long it takes to come to pressure or does it depend on what type of thing you have in there um it, it doesn't work oh dear okay well, then i guess we'll just set it on a chair by the yeah. or on the floor whatever um i think a lot of it depends on the temperature as well as the amount of food that's in there so I know like for if you have something frozen, like the cook time never changes. If you're cooking from frozen versus cooking from fresh, it just takes longer to, okay. to get hot enough to be at boiling at pressure. So. Okay, not working either. I wonder what about in the kitchen? Yeah, we can just put it in the kitchen. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's 